welcome to End the Spread. My name is Corey Allen, and I'm here to teach you guys how to break down reservoir coves and cuts for musky fishing. This is a topic that uh, has had some coverage over the years, but not a whole lot because, to be quite frank, South isn't really known for musky fishing. It's getting there. But the thing is, most of musky fishing has been centered along the northern borders. Even with fisheries like Kentucky and now Tennessee, uh, we've got the opportunity to see how these fish operate in these really complex systems. But like I said, there's not been a whole lot of coverage concerning it. And you're dealing with a whole different set of challenges too. The layout of these reservoirs is so much more complex than many natural lakes, so much more complex than even the flowages, which are essentially reservoirs in uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota. But then you get down to these, in the lowlands, like down on the hills here in Tennessee and Kentucky, and you're dealing with different animals. You're not just dealing with fish that live in the south. You're dealing with the environmental conditions, yes, but you're also dealing with the fact that the very thing that made these lakes makes them much more complex in ways to analyze and approach. It's not as cut and dry as it is to fish some places for muskies, but oftentimes the very things that make them more challenging are the same things that put out some really big freaking fish. Today though, what we're doing is we're in a situation that came a little bit early this year. On this reservoir in Melton Hill, what happens every year is we have something called the flush. Now the flush is kind of self-explanatory once you realize what's going on. The lake coming into this is Norris Lake, and Norris Lake is about 220 feet at the dam. The water that's coming out of the generators for that, which is the TVA reservoir, the first that was ever built, is 46 degrees. Now, that's year round, that doesn't change. That's 46 degrees in December, it's 46 degrees in July. It doesn't change because the water is, it's so deep down there, and it's so removed from any light penetration that it basically stays that almost constantly. What that does to a system like this is whatever they decide to do up at HQ, TVA Central in Knoxville, to be quite frank, they don't really think about the fishing so much. Their job is to control floods and give us power. So we're not just at the mercy of the weather and the water as they exist. We're also at the mercy of whatever the TVA decides to do, or in a lot of cases with Southern Reservoirs, the Army Corps of Engineers. So right now what they've done is artificially induced a very drastic temperature change throughout the entire system in a very short span of time, a matter of a couple days. So almost overnight, the situation and temperature on the channel went from being in the 70s to now it's about 52 degrees out there, even down, mm, it's about 20 miles from the dam where it's putting it in. So what does that do to the fish? Now, if you've heard me talk before, I like coves, they're all right. But in all honesty, I'm not convinced that most of the time the big fish spend most of their lives in coves. But there are times when they come to these as a bastion. One of the times is the spring, when they come to spawn. And the other time is when they provide some kind of thermal regime. In this situation, we're dealing with a uh, thermal regime. These are the places that they're sheltered from that sudden influx of cold water. Their physiology does not want to deal with that. And especially given the fact that they're able to sense a transition, all of these coves, most of them, provide varying levels of security and uh, they buffer those effects. They can actually escape into them. And that's exactly what they do. This is a little bit of a different, unique situation and it can throw some people for a curve. But one of the cool things that it can do is it can concentrate a lot of big fish in a very small area. And given the right circumstances, you can contact some really giant fish in a way that you would never get to see under normal circumstances. Now the way we're going to approach these coves is very multilateral. 
We're not just going to say, you know, go hit the bank like I'm doing right now and throw a white spinnerbait. No. I'm going to try to teach you how to break down a cove, not just once you get there and you figured out which cove you should fish in given circumstances, but how to find the best coves given the circumstances. They're not all created equal. They all have different tendencies, different traits, different layouts that make them more suited than some of the others. This one in particular we're fishing has been very productive. We've talked and we're going to talk about what makes this cove in particular absolutely astounding during situations like this. And we're also going to talk about how you can best capitalize on that. Now the thing is, and I want to make this very clear, these types of videos like this, we're not in this just to show you catching fish. I've done videos like that. Uh, we'll do some videos like that for you guys. That's no problem. If you don't believe me they haven't caught fish, you should check out my website sometime, Tennessee Valley Muskie Authority. I've got quite the contingency of big fish, over 50 inches, literally all from Tennessee. But right now, what I'm here to do is to teach you how to fish. I'm going to break this down. I'm going to scientifically analyze it. I'm going to scientifically break down the fish, how you can analyze your own techniques on the water at the time, because to be quite frank, I'm not going to be on the water with you. You're not going to be on the water with me. We're probably never going to fish the exact same spot at the exact same time. So me giving you static answers of what may or may not work today may or may not help you at all in the future. But what I can help you do is how to analyze conditions for yourself and then properly come to your own conclusions through both trial and error and intuition.